Hi, my name is Heather Simpson. I'm an occupational therapist from the University of Florida as part of the Southeast Regional Centers of Excellence. I'll be talking to you today about sensory processing and Tourette's. Sensory integration and sensory processing. The term sensory integration or sensory processing were defined by Gene Ayers in the 1970s and they're used interchangeably. Essentially it's a neurological process in which we intake our senses, sight, sound, feeling, taste, smell, into our central nervous system and then how we export it in, during our day and we make it into a behavior. So Gene Ayers also mentioned two internal senses, proprioception, so how we move, and vestibular, so how we interpret how we are moving based on how our head's moving in space. We can have appropriate behaviors or inappropriate behaviors based on this. So we can have movement and we can be okay with it, or we can be have movement and we cannot be okay with it, such as we can be in a car and we can get car sick, that is when it becomes sensory integration dysfunction, is when it becomes problematic or it starts to interfere with our day. And that is when you hear the term sensory processing disorder. And so occupational therapists look at sensory processing disorder based on how we interpret our senses and how they start to interfere throughout our day. We all, as children, as adolescents, as adults, have some sort of sensory processing issues. So we might have difficulties with tags in our clothes and they might bother us, but when it becomes interfering to the point that we can't wear certain clothes or we can't wear clothes at all because it really bothers us, then that is when it becomes really dysfunctional. Common sensory issues in Tourette. Although there is not a lot of research on Tourette's and sensory integration out there, we do know that with sensory integration, it is common in ADHD, anxiety, OCD, and autism. We do know with Tourette's that there are sensory modulation disorders, sensory processing discrimination disorders, and sensory motor planning disorders. With sensory modulation disorders, most common is poor frustration tolerance. For example, when you are doing homework at home with a child with sensory processing and something gets a little bit difficult, you might see a pure shutdown and a meltdown. It could be they just quit completely, or you might see one of those rage attacks that are very common with Tourette's. With sensory discrimination, you might see a child who's in school and has a really hard time focusing and listening to the teacher because there's sounds going on around them with the kid who's tapping their pencil, or you might see somebody um, trying to get up and move or playing with a fidget, or they have a hard time because there's multiple different other, there's tags in their clothes that are bothering them. And with sensory motor planning disorders, this is where things like dysgraphia, sloppy handwriting, ball, clumsy ball skills come into play, or difficulty with tying shoelaces, or knowing how to play with peers come, become difficult. Even difficulty with following directions become difficult with sensory motor planning. Treatment and supports for sensory processing. The number of supports and treatments for sensory integration are vast, and they vary depending on what type of sensory processing disorder you or your child might have. You might see that there are um, things such as sensory diets, sensory arousal programs, or environmental modifications that are prescribed by an occupational therapist. Some of the most popular that you might see are arousal programs, such as the ALERT program, or the Zones of Regulation program, or the CPRI toolkit. These are all designed to help somebody understand and recognize the sensory inputs that are making them feel awkward or making them have these adverse reactions and helping them recognize that they're, they're making them feel bad and have these adverse reactions and ideally prevent them from having them in the future. A sensory diet is not a food-based program, but it's something to help provide people with as many sensory programs and sensory opportunities throughout the day that they can get. So it might be providing somebody with many 
rest breaks that provide movements. It might be it might be related to a chew tube. It might be related to where they can go outside and run on the playground for five, 10 minutes at a time because they need to move. Otherwise, if they sit there all day, they're going to explode. It might be a environmental modification and we just can't give you enough sensory input throughout your day, but maybe we can modify the environment to you. Maybe we put a fair band around the bottom of your desk so that you can move your feet while you're in school and then you perform better at school. The ultimate goal of all sensory integration therapy is to organize your brain so that you can perform better in all of your occupations and everything throughout your day. For more information or resources, please visit our Tourette Association website at Tourette.org.